John Keim, ESPN.com's local commander's reporter, had a story he posted today on the national website, first impressions of commander's rookie quarterback, Jaden Daniels. And he got into a lot of what he's heard from players and coaches at the podium over the last couple of weeks about Daniels in the early going. He joked in the lead of the story that the only throw he's made that really led to any ire was his first pitch. <laughs> Uh, out at Nationals Park, and that otherwise everything's gone seamlessly. Writing, the errant pitch was one of the few times Daniels has left observers unimpressed this spring. Otherwise, the number two pick in the 2024 draft has left a favorable early imprint on his teammates and coaches. They know uh, they know more steps remain. He has yet to face a live pass rush, an opposing defense, or anybody in pads. Teammates and coaches have pointed out that they have acknowledged that there will be good and bad days ahead as Daniels develops. But after getting a first glimpse of the hours he puts in at the facility, his ability to call, make, and direct plays on the field, and his engaging personality, they cannot wait to see how he progresses. The, the piece is essentially about how right now, the first impression of Daniels in the building has been wonderful. This is as good as it can be. Again, no games are played. No you know, third and sevens have been converted or otherwise. But all you can control is what's in your can control. In your control, rather. And the habits are there. The working on stuff. You don't just get in early and sit down with your feet up and drink coffee. You actually are going to work. You're going to do something. And he and Luke McCaffrey are walking through plays to get a better, better grasp of the playbook. He's trying to make every throw, trying to learn as much as he possibly can at all times. And there's a, a, a an axiom or the kind of the beginning of, if you've ever taken an improv class, where the first tenet you learn about doing improv is yes and meaning you accept the situation and what are you going to do about it, right? In other words, you're in there with everybody. You're in there in that scene, and this is where you ended up. Now, what are you going to do? Are you going to rest on your laurels, congratulate yourself for being there? A lot of guys have. A lot of guys signed that contract, got a paycheck. We're out to make that money, boss, or whatever the hell they wanted to do, which wasn't necessarily to be the best football player possible. If he fails, it's not going to be because he didn't work at it. And that, to me, is just so much fun and so refreshing that this is what he's about. He's about showing up and doing the work. And that's what turned him from kind of a college disappointment into the Heisman Trophy winner, breaking records at, at LSU, what made him so attractive to me to, uh, to be a pro prospect. And it sounds like he's carried that over to the league, and I'm excited about it. One of the angles here in this story is about the lack of success Washington has had drafting quarterbacks in the first round, something we've talked quite a bit about. Sure, But you can go all the way back to 1994 through 2019. Heath Schuler. Patrick Ramsey, Jason Campbell, Robert Griffin III, and Dwayne Haskins, who combined as starting quarterbacks to go 51 and 86, if you're into that kind of thing. But more importantly, one Pro Bowl selection, that was Griffin, Griffin. as a rookie in Basically 2012. one good season out of that group. Yeah, I mean, Campbell had Campbell some decent fine, yeah. years, but yes, that one outstanding season mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, only Campbell served as the primary starter for four years. The other guys either in Griffin's case, burned out very quickly or just never really got it figured out. Also, the only one who started 12 or more games in three different seasons, Jason Campbell. So there's just been no longevity. Uh, but the idea is Jalen Daniels, uh, Jaden Daniels is different. That Jaden Daniels is going to do what none of those other guys uh, has been able to do. And one of the arguments in this piece about what a great first impression he's made is that his teammates are really enamored with the work he's putting in. And I think this is kind of what I would highlight. If you're asking me, what's your first impression that, that's notable? What, what do you like that you've heard so far? It's about, as much as it's overplayed now, when he's getting there, you know, how much time he's spending in the film room, the hours he's putting in. That's how you impress me as a quarterback. It's not throwing in a t-shirt and shorts. I'm not going to go full Doc Walker on you, but... There's not a whole lot you can do when you won a Heisman Trophy at LSU in the bubble in June when you're wearing spandex that is going to move the needle for me. I know you got the physical talent. I care about things like how many plays is he checking out of? How is the, the picking up of the playbook going? What kind of studying is being done? Um, defensive tackle John Allen said he always beats me here, so I think that's pretty cool. He gets there at 6.45 a.m. That has not always been the case with the young hotshot quarterbacks recently in that organization. You start to doubt yourself a little bit, said guard Nick Allegretti, who gets there at 6.30 in the morning. 
You think you're one of the early guys. And then he looks like he's been there for a minute. He's bright eyed. I'm dragging at 630. I'm going to work on it. Maybe get here by six. Daniels gets there at 545 a.m. It's easy to roll your eyes and go, okay, that, that doesn't win you a Super Bowl. And not directly. But getting there at 5.45 a.m. and busting your butt gives you a chance to win one at that position. I promise you that. Putting in the work. That's again. what the really good players do. And that's what's exciting. And again, and this, again, does that complete a pass in November? Not necessarily. But it's also the best way to avoid having some of those labels. Because you know what it sounds like. You know what it looks like when you hear about it, right? When it's not ideal. When someone isn't putting in not only just the, pre, the normal amount of work, but like the prerequisite amount of work, but the extra stuff. Guys notice that sort of thing, right? And if you're going to lead everybody, the best thing to do is outwork everybody. And then when you have something to say, people tend to listen to it. I also really like that Luke McCaffrey is doing everything with him. Mm -hmm. So McCaffrey is obviously a first-year rookie wide receiver. They just drafted in the top 100. But remember, he was a quarterback, and I don't think that can be underscored enough. He was a quarterback in high school. He was a quarterback in college. I think he was recruited to Michigan before he transferred. You know, he was at a major program and, and left to go – become a wide receiver and ended up getting drafted where he did because he's such an unbelievable athlete with great skills and, you know, great intangibles. But to have another quarterback, basically, who now plays receiver, who can, who knows what you yeah. need when you're studying an offense, when you're learning a playbook and what you have to uh, be able to process and that, that cerebral element of the game. It's one thing if just the receiver is doing that for an, a, a quarterback, really, at, at his core, to be doing that with you is a big, big deal, I think. And I really, really like that. They go over the playbook, and then they go out to the bubble and go through concepts, starting at like 6 a.m. each morning. I think that's awesome. Me too. I love that. Again, th this is the this was the story that kind of made me, obviously, the Heisman Trophy caliber play <laughs> was was pretty good too. But the stories about him that sort of came out in, in, in the wake of the season, that's what got me so excited. It was the, again, he was at Arizona State and was fine. And he was even pretty good at LSU, but it was this level of dedication to be able to deal uh, with with everything being thrown at him from a coaching staff that's probably not that pleasant to be around all, all, all the time in terms of what's demanded of the QB. And he he sailed through that with flying colors by outworking everybody. That's the thing that I get steamed up about, right? Is if we're going to go down, let's go down this way. Let's lose like this. Let's not lose where we're going to play golf and not going to the senior bowl like Ron Rivera. If we're going to lose, let's do this. Let's work so hard that we leave no stone unturned. That's what I want. Cliff Kingsbury on first impression of Jaden Daniels. His football IQ is really high. With protections, I've been really impressed by that. A lot of guys coming into the league, it's not an area that they major in in college. They don't have a lot of time, but he's well-versed in protections, and he works at it. He's further along than you probably should be, Dan Quinn added about Jaden Daniels in that regard. So this piece, again, is all about asking people around the building for their first impressions of Jaden Daniels. But we want to pose the same question to you guys at 800-636-1067 on the MGM National Harbor listener lines. We can open up the phones on this next. Jaden Daniels was drafted end of April. It has now been almost two months. A lot of mini camp, OTA, workout time, and plenty of stories and pixels on him to this point. What has stood out to you? What have been your early impressions on Daniels, the rookie quarterback here in D.C.? What's your first impression of Jaden Daniels? Peace and ESPN.com today about all of the first impressions from coaches and players in the building. Let's go to John in Rockville. Hey, John, how are you? All right, what's going on, guys? I just wanted to kind of say quickly that, you know, the whole thing about Jay and Daniels is exactly what you would hope to expect. The biggest takeaway and difference for me is that, you know, we heard four years about a culture change in DC. This is the culture change. We're finally allowing someone to be set up for success. We're holding people accountable. Like this is actually what gets me the most pumped up about, you know, Jaden Daniels and his future is that you actually have the infrastructure for once around him. And, and that's, I think probably the biggest takeaway from all of this. No, I love that angle because remind, you know, if, if they'd had the number two overall pick under Snyder, they might've drafted this kid dropped into a GM less rudderless. Okay, kid come save us instead of, 
no, you've got a general manager and a great assistant general manager and a, a setup that's the envy of a lot of people. A coaching staff that's, you know, it's now people want to come work instead of, yeah, I'll take that gig. You know what I mean? Instead of the Greg Minuski tier, you've got the Joe Witt tier. You know what I mean? Like the, the, the exciting uh, buzz around the organization. So it's a much better setup than it would have been, say, three years ago. Maybe this is a different way to say what he just did because I think they're relatable. I also think this is the first time that everybody in the building is on the same page as it pertains to developing and getting the most out of this player and wanting this guy to thrive since probably the Jason Campbell pick when Joe Gibbs and Dan Snyder were the coach slash GM slash owner. And they had other titles at the time, but Joe Gibbs was running the football operation and Dan essentially allowed him to as his biggest fan. Mm -hmm. But in 2012 with Griffin, that was mostly a Dan Snyder creation. I think that the Shanahan's were fine with it, but their selection of cousins is all you need to know about how confident or sure they were or kind of how in they were, so to speak. And Robert has talked about this. I mean, it was obviously an issue for him that he never without putting words in his mouth. I don't know if he would agree to this or not, but I think to some extent he, he's suggested like that he always felt like he had to look over his shoulder in some way. I think Kyle Shanahan designing the offense he did helped make Robert Griffin very successful in his rookie year, and they wanted him to exceed, uh, succeed. They needed him to excel, and he did early on. But it wasn't 100% everyone on the same page. We're all making the pick for the guy that we all like. It definitely wasn't that way with Dwayne Haskins. When the football people told Dan Snyder that that was not the pick that they wanted to make. And what happened with Dwayne Haskins is so tragic and awful, it makes it hard to go back and talk about him as a football prospect. But the reason that they traded up into the end of the first round and took Montez Sweat later was that it was essentially the... It's like a compromise to the football guys. It was the olive branch yeah. from Snyder to say, okay, well, you guys can get your guy, we'll come up, but you're taking my guy at 15. And right away, it's not like, again, Jay Gruden put in the work, wanted him to succeed. If he if he's good, you have a chance to keep your job. If he's not, you're probably in big trouble. But right away, you, you, you knew that this staff didn't really buy in. They never loved this guy. They didn't really think he could do it. And it's hard to pretend, I think. Mm -hmm. and, and that animus behind the scenes becomes pretty clear to players. They're not stupid. They, they know what's going on. So you finally now have a situation where everyone's on the same page. And maybe that's what he's talking about in terms of the culture, the, the yep. head coach, the GM, every person in the building, the ownership all the way down to the water boy. They all <laughs> desperately want Jaden Daniels to win rookie of the year. It's not like somebody looks smart and somebody looks bad because we were at odds. They're all in this thing together. And to me, that's really the only way you can make the quarterback thing work because it's so hard for these guys Indeed. to develop. Yeah, all the gears are lined up. In other words, it's not one gear that's in a, well, we're in year three spot, and then the, the, this gear is a rookie quarterback spot, so that doesn't jive, or it's a GM on a second coach spot. Everything is new this year. This is all, they're all coming in together, and it's, you know, in everyone's best interest, obviously, that it works out. I mean, it's always in your best interest to have it work out, but this is different where it's, you're not, nobody's being foisted on anybody. Right. I mean, you might have disagreements in the draft. It's not to say that there never have been and, and there should be. That's healthy. But this is a to your point, everybody's pulling the rope in the same direction. Right. This isn't a CYA time where everyone needed to know a lot of people had to get their word out really quickly. Again, I, I echo your sentiments about Haskins. It's hard to talk about, but people needed others to know. This wasn't our pick. You know what I mean? Like that had to happen quickly because there was there had to be some CYA if yeah. and when it didn't work I out. Think a big That's part not of that happening. Is, right. Like it's a chicken or the egg thing where if you weren't doing that, could it help him? And maybe he develops better. Sure. But I also think they're going, this is not going to work. Like this guy should not have been the pick and it's on my butt. Yep. And everybody knows that because we took him, you know, I thought he was good. I need everyone to know I would not have done this. Wasn't me. But when you're busy doing that and everyone's covering their own, butt, it, it speaks to a toxic, awful workplace and a terrible culture because you're in it for yourself in some way, not the team. But so is everybody else in the building. Yeah. So it's a, you know, it's like a killer be killed kind of scenario. Everyone else is doing it. You kind of have to do it. But that was the toxicity and the awfulness of the old place. And it is gone now. And you can't win that way. You can't thrive that way. Good young quarterbacks aren't going to play at a high level that way. So to the caller's point with this culture, all systems are go for Jaden Daniels, who's already signed his contract. 
to hit the ground sprinting. And and if if that's his first impression is that everything around him is harmonious enough that he can actually make this work in a way that his predecessors couldn't, I actually think that's smart. I do too. Yeah, I mean, it gives you a chance, right? I mean, you know, we've debated smaller edge things like, do they have enough at left tackle or how's the receiver position? But big picture, if you have an organizational culture that's positive, everybody, quarterback, as you said, on down to the secondary water ball. 